Hi, this is Mike, and you're watching Real Black TV. Today we're in Silver Spring, Maryland for the AFI Silver Dogs Film Festival, and we have the pleasure of being with Nancy Bursky and Elizabeth Haviland James, the filmmakers of the new movie, A Loving Story. I didn't know there was a law against it. So we could go away, but it's the principle, it's the law. I don't think it's right. The Loving Story is a story of an interracial couple who married in the late 50s in Virginia. Um, they were promptly arrested for the crime of falling in love and getting married and exiled from the state for 25 years. They lived in Washington, D.C. for a while, but the civil rights movement was really getting going and they realized that maybe it might help them be able to return to Virginia where their family was. Um, they were not activists, but they desperately wanted to go home and live with their family in Virginia. So they appealed to the ACLU, they took on their case, eventually it went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruling, which happened on June 12th, 1967, overturned all the anti-miscegenation rulings in the country. Yeah, I mean, it's, I thought it was an amazing film. We had a chance to see it yesterday. It'll also be on HBO, so everybody can have a chance to check it out. But what, what was really impressed me about the film is, talks about something that was over 40 years ago, but the, the judgment also could probably apply to like gay marriage and other, other unions that are they're coming up in, into our 21st century. Um, what, what inspired you to want to tell this story? Mildred died in 2008, May 2008, and I read her obituary, and I realized that I had never seen a film on her, nor had I seen a film on miscegenation, um, which is the term that's used to refer to interracial marriage. Um, it felt like a huge oversight. Um, other people had dealt with this story, usually in law schools, um, but there wasn't a lot of information about the couple themselves, and I felt like this was a chance to make their story human. And there's some amazing interviews and also some amazing archival footage. Can you talk about the use of archival in your film and, and, and how, how you came across it? Well, we had the amazing good fortune of inheriting footage from a filmmaker who shot with the Lovings in the 60s. Her name was Hope Ryden. She spent several days with the family and with the attorneys. Subsequently, she intended to make a film, but it never happened, and so... When we uncovered the footage, we really knew that there was a beautiful, amazing story that we were going to be able to carve out of her material. And it allowed us to tell the story without having to use a narrator and without having to do a lot of the conventional things that documentaries do because we had this wealth of material that allowed the story to unfold in front of you as if it were happening now. So uh, we were really very blessed to have access to that material. It, it allowed us to develop characters in a way that you often don't see in documentary. These people speak for themselves in this film. And so you follow their story um, very much like a narrative. Um, and you kind of, it, it does almost feel like a fiction film, the way you have your story arc beginning, middle, and end. Um, and it unfolds in a way that you just don't normally see in documentary. We were very excited about having that opportunity to immerse people in their experience. I mean, do you feel like that's the key? Like, could you have made the film without this? Or? You know, I didn't have the footage when I first started the film. And I started, I knew I, it was going to rely on footage if I could find it and photographs. Um, but I did sense that I might have to rely on a narrator. Um, once we discovered this footage and realized how much there was of them that had never been seen before, by the way, um, it became a very different film. So final thoughts. I mean, what, what do you hope people take away from the loving story? And where can we see it? Well, we're playing here at Silver Docks now. Uh, we have a long festival run leading up to our broadcast, which will be in February 2012 on HBO. Subsequent to that, it will be available for home video and educational purposes. We um, hope to do a lot of outreach screenings in the South in communities that have been affected by civil rights change and work with reconciliation groups and others to make sure that the film gets to communities that may be underserved by the film world in general. 
Um, in terms of taking something away, why don't you take it, you take it away? It away. <laughs> you know, I, what Elizabeth said about simple people making a difference, I think, is one of the important lessons in this film. Um, this couple does not fit into the stereotype we usually have of people who change history. Um, and it reminds us that anybody really can do it. Um, it, it also reminds us that love is awfully powerful. Um, it, it can drive you to do anything just to be able to be with the person you love. So it's, it's a pretty passionate, lovely story about two people who changed history. Well, we at, Lo at Real Black love the film, and thank you for being on the show. My name is Nancy Bursky. I'm Elizabeth Haviland James. And you're, you're watching, watching Real, Real Black. Black.